Does Mark Cucurella to Manchester United make sense? Today, we're going to be answering that question. We're going to look at the tactics, the statistics, and look at the profile and see whether he fits into Eric Ten Hag's Man United. If you are new around here, of course, smash that subscribe button. Like the video if you like what you're seeing in terms of the analysis and get into the comments below. Should Manchester United sign Cucurella as a full transfer or a loan deal? So in terms of Mark Cucurella, he played his best football at Brighton under Graham Potter. They very much operated with a back three using two wingbacks uh, high on either side, um, be it a nominal winger or a fullback. And Kukrela would play this outside centre-half role. And instead of the traditional overlapping centre-backs that we saw with Chris Wilder, Sheffield United in the final third, where they'd overlap the uh, you know the wingback ahead of him, Mark Kukrela spent a lot of time underlapping and hitting the inside left channel to receive the ball and look to get balls into the box or simply keep the play going. Kukrela profiles a player that would do really well in an inverted role in midfield for Manchester United or sitting as the outside centre-back in a back three in possession like uh, like he sort of did at times for Brighton. Think daily blind at Ajax. In terms of Mark Kukrela, his best season came in a 21-22 season for Brighton. And in fact, I put him in my team of the season before his move to Chelsea. We'll talk about Chelsea a little bit later on, but let's just dive into the analysis straight away. So Kukrela from this kind of left centre-back position would move into into the inside channel uh, to get on the ball. This is kind of perfect of what Eric Ten Hag would want as a, of a left back in the modern day. You're thinking with Eric Ten Hag's teams, the fullbacks do invert, they hit the inside channels and the nominal wingers hold the width on the outside, allowing space for that fullback to get on the ball and make things happen. In terms of this move against Chelsea, this is a 1-1 draw with Chelsea in the 2021-22 season. Kukela moving into that advanced area, Brighton playing a lovely little passing combination through Adam Lalana working the ball out to Kukrela. kukrela has got a really good ability in terms of spotting space and receiving the ball. His first touch is absolutely fantastic. From this position, of course, he's going to look for the ball into the box. Lovely clip ball onto the head of Danny Welbeck to head home and give Brighton a valuable point away at Stamford Bridge. But that movement from that left centre-back position, moving into the final third, into the inside channel, is a classic thing that Eric Ten Hag wants his fullbacks to do. So I think from a tactical sense, it kind of makes sense that Eric Ten Hag would sign someone like Kukrela. Of course, United don't necessarily play a back three under Eric Ten Hag, so it'd be more Mar Marcus Rashford in the final third, holding the width, uh, you know, cutting inside, combining with Bruno Fernandes and so forth. And Kukrela could even play that inside role, leaving Christian Eriksen to get involved or Mason Mount to get involved into the build-up or hopefully Amrabat in the build-up. Um, and United would use utilise that kind of diamond of inverted fullbacks in central midfield. Alternatively, the tactical situation could be uh, Amrabat holding a slightly higher position uh, or Casemiro even moving into an advanced area and Kukrela joining the back three. From there, he can use his progressive passing to you know utilise those balls either up to the, the forwards or in behind the defence for Rasmus Hoyland. Kukrela's got a great range of passing and loves playing those defence-splitting passing. Progressing passing is 101 of his skill set for Brighton and for Chelsea. I think one of the big things as well that I really like about him is he's really good when there's passing combinations, when there's passing triangles or there's diamonds, uh, you know, utilising those one-touch play. When the play gets fast, Kukrela is very, very capable of keeping the ball moving on. And he's usually the one, if the opposition are pressing super high up the pitch to play the progressive pass. So United are recycling through, uh, you know, Martinez, Amrabat, Kukrela. Kukrela is the one that's going to fire the ball into Bruno Fernandes' feet. And we'll have a few, uh, a look at a few clips of him doing that for, uh, for Chelsea. But I think first and foremost, I think we've got to talk about his form this season. You know, as you can see, not great in the Premier League. He had a number of games that he really kind of didn't play at the level that you'd expect. And there's one against um, Manchester City in a 1-0 defeat uh, where Jamie Carragher described it as one of the worst defensive performances ever seen. A little bit harsh. We'll look at that in, in a little bit. But there was other games where he just kind of exposed himself defensively. I think the Fulham match as well didn't have a great game in a defensive sense, off the bench. Um, there are a few performances that were questionable because of the fee, and I think that's a big thing. If Mark Kukela joined Chelsea for around 30 million quid, like was probably his market value, the signing wouldn't have been, you know, wouldn't have been too bad. I think the pressure would have been less on Kukela's back. You know, coming through the Barcelona Academy, then moving to Getafe, then to Brighton, um, 
you know, the pressure wasn't really there and he could really play with freedom and joy. And of course, Graham Potter's side was so positional and possession based that someone like Kukrela really fit in. But that move to Chelsea, I think, was just at the completely the wrong time. Kukrela really should have gone to Manchester City. But City put a bid in, Chelsea put a bigger bid in, and he eventually went there. I think the big thing with Kukrela, you know, you look at the season that he absolutely excelled for Brighton, he was brilliant. Best fullback in the Premier League for me. Superb on the ball, loads of touches, um, loads of dominating displays, winning 59% of his duels, which is great numbers, 61% of his ground duels, 2.7 tackles per game, 0.9 interceptions. The aggression is a key part of Kukrela's game. Um, and we saw it at Brighton. Moving to Chelsea again, it's a slightly different makeup of you've got to probably pick out a few games where he really excelled. I think one of his best games came against Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League playing as a left centre-back in their 3-4-3. You know, one of the things that I really like about Kukrela is he's very, very aggressive and he's really quick to close down. That's something that Man United don't have. I really fear for United in certain moments when they're pressing high up the pitch, when the opponent's got the ball. Their narrow kind of 4-2-3-1 press that they, they utilise to kind of squeeze the ball down one wing. You know, let's say if we're pressing down the right side, it's super narrow and it, and it works in in certain situations, the issue comes when teams switch to play and then there's a massive, massive amount of space that, that players or especially the fullbacks have to make up to press. Kukrea is good at this. He is good at covering ground, ground and good at reading the play. So let's take a look at a few examples of him doing that for Chelsea in the Borussia Dortmund game. So we're diving straight in. Um, Borussia Dortmund building out of the back right at the start of the game with the goalkeeper. This is why I like Kukrea because you can see that Chelsea are setting the press up. This is when Graham Potter was still manager and they still had pressing schemes uh, kind of fell away under Frank Lampard uh, but the ball into the feet of the outside centre-back uh, in Nicolas Schuler. you can see Chelsea's press Joao Felix is pressing a football Kai Havertz is sitting on the central passing option and Ben Chilwell super high on the right back the ball the out ball is going to be a flat ball into the feet of the forward but just look at how Kukrela is on it straight away intercepting the play winning the ball back in the final third this is something that Man United really lack at times especially at left back Luke Shaw is far too slow in terms of his reading of the play and him getting there there was a great example in the recent game against Tottenham with Hume Son's chance on the other side where they played through United's pressure and Luke Shaw was so slow to react and then they had the chance on goal down the right hand side with Kulisevsky creating to the back stick with Kukrela in the team, probably not going to happen. I think one of his best attributes is his pressing and his aggression in these situations. That was one example where he won the ball back for Chelsea, high up the pitch. Again, Chelsea probably should have done a lot better with the chance, but they didn't. But think about Bruno Fernandes, Marcus Rashford, Hoyland being in an open game state like it would be with the opposition in a you know build-up sort of situation. So that was one example. Uh, again, Joao Felix getting the ball in the final third should do more with it. Uh, another one, Emery Chan carrying through the middle, uh, you know, out of the, the press from Sterling. Ben Chilwell in a bit of a halfway house, ready to engage the right back, but also looking to, uh, you know, looking to step in potentially if he drives towards him. But what I love about this is Kukrela is so, so quick. Chan's beating that first line of pressure and he's jumping. Kukrela is very, very good at jumping and the speed that he can do it and the aggression that he goes in with a challenge here is absolutely fantastic. And it's another situation where he's won the ball through a really good, you know, jump, a uh, good pressing moment, nicked it, and Sterling, again, is in a wonderful position. And this is what I don't see from Manchester United, winning the ball back in these types of areas, you know, in the opponent's half, real aggression, smashing him in the back, and then winning the ball. You know, super defensive play from, from Cucurella in a pressing situation. I think one of the things to note, Cucurella is in a very good defender within a system, you know, within a pressing system, within a system that defends him. It's when he gets a little bit exposed 1v1 with space, which you shouldn't really it shouldn't really happen in European football. You shouldn't be leaving your, you know, fullbacks exposed in the final in your defensive third. It's not what you want to do. But Cucurella within a system, as we saw here in the pressing moments, very, very good. So let's move on to that football inside. As I mentioned before, Cucurella loves passing against the grain. As we mentioned, really good passer in those quick sort of triangles, diamond structures, but he hits these flat passes superbly well. This is one into the feet of Joao Felix, you know, to basically take in uh, three Borussia Dortmund players out, plus Jude Bellingham out of the game. You know, in terms of packing, he's beaten, you know, six players in that, or maybe five players. You consider the two central players, plus the three that are pressing. This came after a lovely little triangle move from Chelsea. Kukrela finds that option to progress the play. United just don't do this enough. 
Too many times they get caught, recycle through the goalkeeper, goes to the right hand side of the pitch, we lose the ball. Uh, with Kukrell and a team, that would change. You know, great footballer in terms of that, you know, the base level, those flat passes into midfield. Another example, again, going to that uh, left hand side. You know, we think Manchester United in terms of these types of passes, uh, you know, you're thinking that it's going to be going into the feet of Marcus Rashford. And that is going to be a big, big bonus to United. I don't think United utilise Rashford enough or haven't done this season. And if United can build, you know, with the the forward staying reasonably high in a sense, you know, getting Rashford the ball to feet and then him being able to turn and break is what we see from Cutrello when the pressure's on, uh, you know, from the opposition. You know, in this instance that we're looking at, Borussia Dortmund are playing super high. Gio Reyna's putting pressure on the ball. Fantastic pass that breaks lines, again beats players, uh, you know, to get the forwards into attacking areas. So let's have a look at his anticipation. I think it's another good part of Kukela's defensive skill set. He's quite quick and mobile. This is just an incident of Borussia Dortmund playing over the top of Chelsea's midfield. The defence is massively disorganised here. We've got the centre-centre-back Koulibaly looking to press the football. Kukela's in a position that's deep. He's trying to cover the space and he does really well. Uh, you know, reads the play, the ball over the top, simply intercepts and plays it back to the keeper as you like. Really comfortable, um, you know, defensive awareness and good defensive play. So there's some moments of Kukrela in a, you know, sort of defensive situation in a game where he excelled, also some passes, uh, you know, that night uh, against uh, Borussia Dortmund. He made four interceptions in the match, completed 35 passes, um, you know, in the game. But I think I want to take you to the, the, the City game. This is a game where, you know, Jamie Carragher and other pundits were um, really critical of Kukrela. Kukrela starting as a left back in the game, playing 68 minutes and getting dribbled past five times, winning four out of his nine tackles, which is a little bit of a concern for a fullback. But quite frankly, I think the game was mixed for him. I thought Chelsea's shape and organisation was very, very poor in the game. But there were still some good moments from Kukrela in the match. And I also want to show you kind of the... Uh, the parts of the game where he was kind of really exposed and what, you know, could be done by Chelsea to kind of negate that problem. So let's start by looking at one of the good things of his game, his pressing and his aggression, you know, one of the, the, the sort of strengths of, of him as a footballer. Here's in the opening 15 minutes, uh, squeezing the play, reading it and winning it back in the final third. Again, a massive benefit. If you can turn over the ball in this area, as I said before, you're going to create goal scoring opportunities. It's a classic kind of the Gagan pressing Jurgen Klopp, using your pressing to create opportunities. But but Kukrela jumps really well onto uh, onto the back of uh, Joao Cancelo. Super aggressive, gets in, gets a foot in, wins the ball really well, carries into the final third. Very, very intelligent pass. That's the other thing with Kukrela. He's a very he he's a heads up footballer. He's going to make good decisions in the final third, but also in his defensive third. Good ball into the feet of Ka Kai Havertz after winning it back through that tackle. Uh, Kai Havertz slides Pulisic through and Pulisic probably should do a lot better with this move. Um, but that was 15 minutes in. I like that a lot from uh, from Kukurel in there. And that from an analytics perspective, wins it, plays the right pass, gets an attacker on the ball in the uh, in zone 13. But let's start to talk about kind of where he was exposed. You know, this is where uh, you started to see the kind of 2v1 emerge. So with Chelsea's uh, defensive shape, frequently what we saw was in the first half, Kevin De Bruyne and, um, you know, Cancelo having a bit of a 2v1 on Mark Cucrella. And in the second half, it was Kevin De Bruyne and Riyad Mahrez. That is one of the most difficult combinations of players to deal with in European football. Um, in the first half, uh, it was it was Cancelo. Cucrella gave himself a good account. I think there were some good tackles in there um, from Cucrella. This is one of them, Kevin De Bruyne working the ball out to Cancelo. But what you can see here is Chelsea's entire shape. We're talking the rest of the back four and the midfield three shifted to the right-hand side of the pit leaving this 1v1. This is a horrible situation to defend. You've got none of your teammates blocking the inside. You've got no one doubling up. You're 1v1. In this instant, on 38 minutes, though, Kukela wins a, a really good challenge on uh, on Cancelo, comes away with the ball, then gets fouled, and it's a really good bit of defensive play. You know, we can't ignore this. This is the game where he got hammered defensively. That was a very difficult situation to defend. He's 1v1, basically, in the penalty area. One of the most technically skillful fullbacks in the league. Uh, does well, wins a free kick. 
Uh, but let's move on to kind of the other sort of situations. These were highlighted quite a lot, and I'd also bl blame Chelsea's overall structure and shape here. You know, this is a ball, simple pass, Walker into the feet of De Bruyne, De Bruyne through to the winger. This is atrocious from Chelsea. The amount of space that Kevin De Bruyne has got here is really, really bad. You know, Kukela should really be goal side of the winger. You know, he is a little bit too focused on the football, which is going to lead to this opportunity. But at the same time, Chelsea's defensive shape here is absolutely rotten. Um, the ball goes through into Kevin De Bruyne's feet. Uh, you've got the space in between the fullback and jo Joao Cancelo now. It is a big, big problem. But there is no one near Kevin De Bruyne. This is shocking defending. And I think one of the big, uh, you know, sort of big tasks with Kukrela that he's got to step up at Manchester United if he joins, and it would make sense if he does this, is that the structure of United has got to be a lot better than Chelsea's structure last season, which shouldn't be too hard. Uh, so again, in behind the defence. But what I like about this is his reaction is good. Yes, of course, he's lost his man. Koulibaly comes over, but Kukela's reaction is good. He's going to take up that centre-back position in the back four and cover that space. There's no one around him in terms of dangers, in terms of threats. So he's going to get a good position at the near post. But, you know, fortunately for Kukela, Cancelo kind of messes it up and the ball goes out. Now let's move on to the goal. This I can't defend at all. Uh, this is something that Luke Shaw did last season. I can't remember who against, but it really annoyed me. Getting to the comments below the game where Luke Shaw, I think it might have been Wolves, completely lost his man at the back stick, just got ran off. Uh, or Fulham, maybe? No, I think it was Fulham at Craven Cottage. I think I've got it, guys. Get into the chat. Let, make, let me know whether that's correct. But this you can't, I can't, you know, defend. This is very, very poor. Low cross into the box from Jack Grealish. You're ahead of your man. You know, Kukrell is ahead of Rio Mares there. Rio Mares gets to the ball first and wins the game for Chelsea. You can't defend that. That is very, very poor defensively. But, you know, this is the kind of situation that this was highlighted a lot. Kukrell very, you know, unaware at the back post, but I'd say he was massively exposed in that game. Didn't have any real help from his, his teammates, uh, you know, in the match. And we look at the average positions for Chelsea. Uh, you know, he's all at sea there, really. Um, you know, from an average position perspective, making a lot of his actions deep on the left-hand side. The number eight, the central midfielder's nowhere near him. The, the winger ahead of him is nowhere near. And this is a game where Manchester City are dominating in the opponent's half. Uh, you know, that's what I'd, what I'd say with that. So we've got to go back to the question, I think, should Manchester United sign Kukrea? Does it make sense? If Manchester United want to build to be a super progressive team in European football, they need to be buying players that are very, very good in possession, that can find the passes into the feet of the forwards and progress play that are calm in possession, but are also work really well from a pressing situation. And that's what Man United really need to look at. You know, he's he's got the quality. If United can sign him on a loan deal with an option to buy, uh, the, you know, the loan deal's not too much cash and the option to buy is a lot less than that 60 million that we saw before. As I said to you, back in the last season, after having one of the best seasons of his life, you know, I would personally say it would be worth around, you know, 30 million. That's what I would put it out as, you know, 30 million pounds for a player of his quality. But the issue is, obviously, he's had a bad season. So the value should go down. So let's say United are offering a loan fee of, let's say, three to four million. You know, 20 million buy, buy out on that is fine. If United buy someone like Kukela and he's at that level for that price, it, it's a good deal for Manchester United and it does make sense. United need more ball players in their team. Um, I genuinely think Luke Shaw is the next player that United need to replace. I mentioned that at the start of the summer that I feel like for United's game to really excel they need a better left back um, especially just to, to improve the progression and improve the football on that side um, Luke Shaw for me is a really good backup left centre back and that's kind of how I see him as an analyst but in terms of the last little bit if United can get Kukrea back to the level the 2021-22 season they will have one of the best fullbacks in the Premier League his rank for Brighton was first for progressive distance carried for carries progressive passes passes into the final third uh, carries into the final third tackles one passes into the box dribblers tackled crosses into the box and second for progressive passes received and tackles plus interceptions. Those statistics are absolutely ideal for what Manchester United want in a fullback. And if he can get back up to that level, absolutely makes sense. But I think the big thing, as we mentioned, a low loan fee and a cheap deal to sign him if the loan comes off at around 20 to 22 million pounds. Anything else in United have been ripped off. Chelsea want to sell this player. They want to get him off the wage bill. Let's not be stupid. But anyway, guys. Get into the comments below. For me, it does make sense. 
to sign someone like Kukre. I think going back and watching him at Brighton and watching his good games at Chelsea, there is a player there. But the team needs to be better to support someone like Kukre. The pressing needs to be in, in check. The possession game needs to be in check. And that's something that Eric Ten Hag is building to at Manchester United. If United can sign Kukre and Amrabat at the back end of this window, it will be chef's kiss. I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe if you're new. Get into the comments below and we'll see you later.